aphasia, which is a difficulty with language, has been known for centuries. These slides, which you can look at later and, and read in completely later, I, I just want to show you. This is a description from 1690 of a person who couldn't find his words. Uh, he, he used the wrong words. He couldn't find the words. They were jumbled. This is a, a cardinal sign of aphasia. What I like about this description in 1843 was that it was by a physician. And so he was, uh, he was quite analytical about what was happening to him. Uh, and, and obviously, since he wrote this, he recovered. And, and we'll see that's, that is one of the signs of aphasia. Um, so what he says is he, he knew that he wanted to speak, but he couldn't find the expressions. He had a thought. And what I like about this is that we, he can tell us he had the thought. Um, but the sounds that had to express it were no longer at my disposition. Beautifully said. A uh, day later, I find myself deprived of the use of almost all words. If some of them remained at my grasp, they were almost useless to me. Uh, I could no longer recall the ways to coordinate them. He didn't know how to put them together. So aphasia as a problem as a, 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 uh, has existed, well, has always existed, but has been recognized and described for centuries. In 1836, Mark Dax wrote the following. He says, I believe to be able to conclude not that all the d diseases of the left hemisphere cause aphasia, but that if there is an aphasia, one must look to the left hemisphere for the cause. So he really was the first person to say that aphasia is a disorder of the left hemisphere. He died right after writing this, and it never reached a popular audience and therefore, about 15 years later, Paul Broca, who was a well-known um, uh, French neurologist, he also described, concluded, uh, after some great um, hesitation, but he did conclude that aphasia came from the left hemisphere. He has been... Uh, awarded the, the common uh, attribution for, for discovering the left hemisphere involvement in aphasia. Uh, uh, but the historical record would suggest that Dax had figured it out before him, before Broca. So how did Broca come to figure this out? Well, he, he saw two patients, um, uh, a, a gentleman named Laborn who could only say tan, 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 and he's, he was, he's nicknamed, LeBorn is nicknamed Tan. If you see in the literature or if you see, um, if you read things, he'll often be referred to as Tan. And Lelong, who could say just a few words, we oui, know toi, toujours, and a version of his own name, Lelo. Now, it may, it may appear to you that using these words, you cannot convey any information. And I want to disabuse you of that notion. I, um, uh, about 10 years ago, I met uh, an older woman who had a pretty complete uh, case of aphasia, and her only words were we. Yet she had full control over her facial expressions, and she had control over her, the tone, what we would call the prosody of her language. And so she and I had this conversation where she just said we, but it was quite clear what she was trying to say to me because of her facial expressions and, and the tone of, of, um, uh, of her voice. So these people are, can communicate, particularly if some, if to somebody who knows them well. There's, there may be some communication, it is, it is, but of course, it is not the communication that they want to have, and it is very frustrating for um, a, a person with aphasia. And so Broca um, saw these two patients, and, and they both died under his care in a situation where he could get their brains. 
He did get their brains. He preserved them in alcohol. They are to this day sitting in alcohol in Paris in the Musée du Poitrain and worth going to uh, uh, see. So this is a picture of uh, tan, I believe. And what, and, and what you see here, I hope, it, here's the cerebellum, here's the temporal cortex, uh, temporal lobe, and, and then here's the um, frontal lobe. And, and tan had a, a non-trivial, huge lesion up in this frontal lobe area. So if we, if we just um, schematize this, so here's the frontal lobe. This is the area that Broca decided was responsible on the left side only for aphasia. And it's today it's called Broca's area. You might notice that it's right next to motor cortex. And so Broca's area, a, a lesion in Broca's area produces what's called a non-fluent aphasia. In other words, the words don't come out well. They, uh, but people with Broca's aphasia will understand speech uh, relatively well. So this is um, just, I just give you a couple more examples of people with aphasia. This is my aunt uh, who is a poet and this is a poem that she wrote uh, uh, after a stroke that she had in her mid fifties. And she says, I'm okay, right? Except symbol spelled incorrectly can't come out mouth in speech. Now she wrote this after she had recovered, but she wrote it to reflect how she felt at that time. She says, I draw a flag out hop, hop pistol window would wave all spelled imaginatively. If I could skill still in hand. So she has skill in her hand, no skill in her mouth. Um, and, and she recovered from this so that uh, 10 years after this stroke, you couldn't tell that she had had this episode of aphasia. And one more example is Jill Bolte Taylor, who had a hemorrhagic stroke. She's a neuroscientist. Uh, she was, and she continues to be a neuroscientist. She wrote a book. I actually listened to the book and she read her own book. She has no trace of her um, difficulty with language. So the aphasia um, in, in the best of circumstances can be, you, people can recover from, these strokes can be recovered from. Obviously the initial patients that Broca saw, they didn't recover from it.